Events are being held today across the country to mark what would have been the 86th birthday of Malcolm X. He was born Malcolm Little in Omaha, Nebraska on May 19, 1925. His mother, Louise Norton Little, raised the family's eight children. His father, Earl Little, was an outspoken Baptist minister and avid supporter of black nationalist leader Marcus Garvey. In an interview in the 1960s, Malcolm briefly spoke about his childhood. You were born in Omaha, is that right? Yes, sir. And you left, your family left Omaha when you were about one year old? I imagine about a year old. And why did they leave Omaha? Well, to my understanding, uh, the Ku Klux Klan uh, burned down one of their homes in, uh, in, uh, in Omaha. This, had a lot of Ku Klux this Klux made Klan. your family feel very unhappy, I'm sure. Well, insecure, if not unhappy. So you must have a somewhat prejudiced point of view, a personally prejudiced point of view. In other words, you cannot look at this in a broad, academic sort of way, really. I, I, I think that's incorrect, because uh, despite the fact that that happened in Omaha, and then when we moved to Lansing, Michigan, our home was burned down again. In fact, my father was killed by the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, and despite all of that, no one was more thoroughly integrated with whites than I. No one has lived more so in the society of whites than I. Malcolm X excelled in school, but eventually dropped out and became a drug dealer, a pimp, and a thief. While serving time in prison, he joined the Nation of Islam, a move that transformed his life. He would rise to become the organization's national spokesperson and one of the most prominent black leaders in the country. He eventually split from the Nation of Islam and founded the Organization of Afro-American Unity. Malcolm X was shot to death on February 21, 1965, at the Audubon Ballroom. He was only 39 years old. Details of his assassination remain disputed to this day. Earlier this year, a major new biography of Malcolm was published entitled Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. The book's author, Columbia University professor Manning Marable, died at the age of 60, just days before its publication. Two decades in the making, the nearly 600-page biography is described as a reevaluation of Malcolm X's life, providing new insights into the circumstances of assassination, as well as raising questions about Malcolm X's own autobiography. Manning Marable appeared on Democracy Now! a number of times to talk about the life of Malcolm X. I think that Malcolm X was the most remarkable historical figure produced by black America in the 20th century. That's a, a heavy statement, but I think that uh, in his 39 short years of life, Malcolm came to symbolize black urban America, its culture, its politics, its militancy, its outrage against structural racism. And at the end of his life, a broad internationalist vision of emancipatory power, uh, far better than any other single individual that he shared with Du Bois and Paul Robeson, a pan-Africanist internationalist perspective. He shared with Marcus Garvey a commitment to building strong black institutions. He shared with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a commitment to peace and uh, the freedom of racialized minorities. He was the first prominent American to uh, attack and to criticize the U.S. role in Southeast Asia, and he came out four square against the Vietnam War in 1964, long before the vast majority of Americans did. So that Malcolm X represents a cut, the cutting edge of a kind of critique of globalization in the 21st century, and in fact, Malcolm, if anything, was far ahead of the curve in so many ways. The late Manning Marable. Joining us now is Zahir Ali, one of Manning Marable's doctoral students and a key researcher for his biography, Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. Uh, Zahir Ali also served as associate director and senior researcher of Columbia University's Malcolm X Project, a program that focuses on the life and legacy of the civil rights activist. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, um, and our condolences on the death of your mentor and friend and colleague. Um, Manning Marable spent two decades of his life working on this book. Talk about what you feel is most central, what Professor Marable felt was 
the most important aspect of right. what he discovered? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor to uh, be here to speak on uh, Dr. Marable's work. Uh, this was a two-decade labor of love, with a 10-year concentrated focus on the specific project of the uh, biography of Malcolm. Um, but for Professor Marable, when he first approached the life of Malcolm, uh, he told me when I started working with him that he envisioned a political biography. Uh, because one of the things he felt in reading the autobiography of Malcolm X is that it was a powerful uh, literary story of personal transformation. But what was missing was the larger historical context that Malcolm functioned in, as well as the political vision that Malcolm was, was moving towards. And so he initially set out to do a political biography of Malcolm very early on. And as he did more research and as the Malcolm X Project was able to access more materials, uh, what emerges is a complex, complicated, um, as a multidimensional portrait of Malcolm in his humanity. And I think so one of the first things that I think Professor Marable wanted to do was present a humanized portrait of Malcolm. Um, and so, in a sense, this book is a kind of iconoclasm in that way, in that it takes Malcolm off of the pedestal to examine him uh, as a human being struggling through these political and religious currents that he was in. Uh, the other ideas, and I think themes that are really important to highlight in terms of Professor Marable's work, is Malcolm's political evolution. Uh, and the clip that you played gives a sense of what Professor Marable felt that evolution was moving towards. What's interesting is that this uh, political evolution Evolution begins far earlier than I think most people you know, uh, recognize. Um, as early as uh, 1955, Malcolm is trying to connect what's going on with the Bandung Conference, and he calls for a Bandung in Harlem. Uh, so he was inspired by this meeting of African and Asian heads of state uh, to call for a meeting of the different organizations in Harlem. And so he was already, as early as, as the mid-50s, connecting what was going on abroad with what was going on domestically. Uh, the third main, I think, theme that comes across in this is uh, Ma Malcolm's deepening sense of faith as a Muslim. And this is something that I think has been hardly discussed in much of the scholarship on Malcolm. And I think it's especially critical. Uh, today we have uh, President Obama about to give a, a second what is being called major speech to the quote unquote Muslim world. And what Malcolm's story I think does, as, as Professor Marable presents it here, is it reasserts the importance of the African American Muslim experience and how that experience is at the intersection of the traditions of Islam that came up in the United States, as well as the global tradition of Islam that Malcolm connected with when he traveled. And finally, I think one of the other major themes, of course, is the, or are the unanswered questions surrounding Malcolm's assassination. And towards the end, uh, I think Dr. Marable draws on some of the previous scholarship done, in addition to engaging some new materials that he had access to, to highlight uh, unanswered questions about about the assassination, uh, irregularities with how the, the case was handled. And he really desired, as he was moving towards the end of this project, that the case be reopened. But now, in terms of the um much has been made of the new material that uh, Manning Marable had access to, uh, not only the the uh, uh, missing chapters of the original Alex, Alex Haley, right. uh, the, his autobiography with Alex Haley, but also access to speeches that uh, Malcolm had made that the Nation of Islam made available. Could right. you talk about the importance of some of this new material uh, right. in terms of fleshing out the story of, of Malcolm's life? Yeah, I, this, uh, this book, uh, I think, is um, Dr. Marable is one of the first scholars to engage material that uh, has, was only recently made available in the last five to ten years. Uh, in addition to um, the the materials you highlighted, he also is the first scholar, I think, to engage Malcolm's diaries um, that were av made available through the Schomburg Library uh, archive of Malcolm X's papers. And what emerges, for example, with the access to the speeches that Malcolm gave while he was in the Nation of Islam, we get a sense of um, the kind of inner life of the Nation of Islam, which is, is, again, something that's neglected in the scholarship on Malcolm, because for 12 years, Malcolm functioned within the, the organizational apparatus of the Nation of Islam. Manny Marable named who he said was the killer of mm -hmm. Malcolm X. 
Who does he say is the killer and what evidence does he have for that? He draws on, well, there were three people who were convicted for Malcolm's assassination, Talmadge Hare, Thomas Johnson, and Norman Butler. According to, and not just Manning Marable, I think there were several other scholars or, uh, or people who investigated Malcolm's assassination, uh, much of the evidence suggests that Talmadge Hare, who was the only person um, caught at the scene of the crime and, and the only person to admit, openly admit guilt, that he was in fact guilty, but that the other two, Thomas Johnson and Norman Butler, the evidence suggests that they were in fact innocent. And so uh, late, I think in the late 70s, Thomas, uh, Thomas Hayer, uh, in an affidavit, sworn affidavit with, with attorney William Kunstler, named his co-conspirators uh, that he said were uh, in, involved in Malcolm the plotting and, and execution of Malcolm's assassination. And of the people that he names, uh, Professor Marables tried to track down where those people are now. And he does do that in the book and identify uh, someone who um, he says corresponds with that list of names that Talmadge Hayer uh, listed. And who was that? That is a gentleman in, in Newark, New Jersey. Named. Um, his name is, Professor Marable says his name in the book, and so I think um, he, he does that by cor correlating uh, public records as well as some oral history interviews that he did do. And of the, the role of the government, uh, and in, 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 uh, in the book he does talk about what the police department did and didn't do on that particular day, and, and the concern is that Malcolm had always had that the government was targeting him uh, for a possible assassination. Yeah, you know, one of the things, uh, of course, when Malcolm was doing his autobiography, uh, there were things that he would not have known. Uh, obviously, um, that was happening around him in, in terms of the level of surveillance. Now, he had, he had an idea of, of the kind of surveillance that he was under, but what he did not know, for example, is that as early as 1950, when Malcolm is in prison and he writes a letter protesting the Korean War, um, that actually is the first page in his FBI file. So as early, this is before he's Malcolm X, the, the FBI has began, has begun watching him. Uh, and, and when he began working with the Nation of Islam in 1954, as he was organizing temples around the country, he goes to Boston to establish the Temple Number 11 there, and he has a small uh, meeting in a, in a family home. And one of those, I think, 12 or 15 people was an FBI informant. So that is how deeply embedded the state apparatus was in terms of their uh, uh, agencies um, in surveilling Malcolm and the Nation of Islam. Moving forward, we find, in terms of, of, of closer to Malcolm, Malcolm's assassination, we find several inconsistencies. We know that Gene Roberts, who was one of his security officers at the Muslim Mosque, Inc., we know that he turned out to be an agent of the Bureau of Special Services. And, and in this, uh, Dr. Marable highlights questions about some of the other people who worked with Malcolm uh, or, uh, that may have had or served as informants to the, the police and federal agencies. Um, there were several, uh, I, you know, irregularities uh, on the day that Malcolm was assassinated on February 21st, 1965. Typically, there would be over two dozen police officers stationed at the Audubon Ballroom where he held his rallies. On this particular day, there were two uniformed officers seen. Uh, so the question is, you know, why was there such a drastic reduction in security just one week after his home was firebombed? Um, so these are some of the questions that, that he raises, I think, in, in Speaking this. of questions, mm -hmm. what about the criticism uh, from some uh, quarters that in his effort to humanize uh, Malcolm, that Manny Marable stepped over the bounds, g get, uh, raising issues in the book about his personal life that even he could not confirm, uh, and in essence, to some degree or other, uh, sullied uh, Malcolm. Well, I think that what Professor Marable tried to do was get as a comprehensive uh, view of Malcolm as possible, drawing on all the existing materials that he had access to. And I think that there is room for discussion. You know, people are always trying to figure out where's the public and the private boundaries in looking at these historic figures. And in this book, Professor Marable makes his own determination. But I think the overwhelming, um, uh, you know, ideas of this book are not about personal uh, reputation, but what comes through 
through this is a deeply sympathetic uh, but critical, compelling uh, uh, image of Malcolm. And I want to say that Dr. Marable, you know, when we worked with him and, as his researchers, he would discuss and debate these issues with us, and he really grappled with how he should handle it. And so um, I don't think that he approached this task uh, lightly at all. Zahir Ali, we want to thank you very much for being with us, one of Manning Marable's doctoral students, key researcher for the biography Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. Uh, Zahir Ali also served as associate director and senior researcher at Columbia University's Malcolm X Project, a program that focuses on the life and legacy of Malcolm X. This is democracy.